welcome to the Utah Buck Report. It's uh, it's me. It's Jay. It's Gary. Whoop. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. I see your uh, your little product placement behind you there, Gary, with the uh, oh. Arrow 103 mug. I need a drink. I can get that for you. <laughs> just coincidentally happened to be placed there, logo facing It's forward. just a good place to have it. Surprised there's not a, like a, a five for the drive shirt somewhere in the back, too. Or I should just have a banner behind me. Yeah, smart. I know Next where they time. are in that building. Okay. All right. Uh, the other guest today, we have Evan Stofflet. You're a frequent guest. Evan, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's been a while. I've been jonesing to get back on. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know, I, know, I know you're all about being in the media. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're missing a couple guests today. We were trying to do another panel and, uh, you know, COVID keeps changing people's schedules and it keeps limiting how they can travel. And uh, one of the guests, we're going to have him on next week. Um, he's an equipment rep. And while he was in Thunder Bay, Ontario, trying to get back to Winnipeg, he was told he can't travel and got stuck sitting in an airport for a minute. And uh, he's trying to figure out if he has to stay somewhere for 10 days or if he just rents a car and drives back. Or... So anyway, uh, COVID is, is really messing with our, our broadcast. But, yeah. uh, it you know, won't take us down. Not <laughs> it can't stop us from just rambling on about hockey anyway. That's right. So... Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about, get your opinions about, um, you know, this is a Utah-based podcast about hockey, but hockey's obviously bigger outside of Utah. I wanted to talk about what's going on with the Ontario Hockey League and major junior hockey and how that could actually affect Utah hockey and could affect all of us, really. And the OHL announced that they are going to start the season up in December and they're going non-check. And I can tell you, there's a lot of jokes being made, but the, the OHL didn't check anyway. You know, <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of finesse players come out of that league or whatever. But that's a big decision to make, and it changes hockey. And uh, I'll start with you, Evan. Like, what do you think about that as, as, as a comeback for the OHL? Um, I guess, you know, if, if that's their only option to come back and play, you got to kind of do it. I don't necessarily see how that will help protect players or, you know, anything like that. Um, obviously we've had to get very unique with a lot of stuff. Um, talking to some of my friends overseas, like they've got rules where they've got to wear a mask in the penalty box, but nowhere else. They're trying to put up things on the benches to separate players. And um, obviously I'm not a science guy or anything, but it's almost like they're putting these things up as like the illusion of safety. Like, look how much we're doing versus what actually would help and fix the situation. So, um, you know, I, obviously I don't have the answer. I, I don't think it was necessary to take away body contact, but once again, if that's their only option to play, it's better to play that way than to not play at all. All right, Gary, what do you think? I, I think everybody would concur with that too. That's that plays there, you know, they, they just want to get back to hockey, but you know, you just go, okay, well, you look at the NFL. I mean, they're not playing flag football out there, right? They're, they're tackling and stuff and seems to be yeah. all right. And I mean, they're, the NFL's had a few breakouts here and there as far as COVID, but that seems to be more practice related than game related. Although it's, a, it's impossible to tell unless you got like one of those CSI cameras following you all, all the time. You're never going to know when you got the, the, the COVIDs, right? So it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, in my world, as a paramedic, I can tell you over the since March, I've probably been around more than 50, but less than 100 COVID positive patients. Mm -hmm. And I so and I get, you know, I pull them out of their house, I put them on a stretcher, I've had a couple that were serious enough that I had to do uh, breathing treatments and advanced breathing procedures. So now we're aerosoling their vapor coming out of their mouth or their breasts coming out right so we've got uh we're exposing ourselves that way to covid mm -hmm. and i'm in my n95 mask and i've got my gown on and i got my glasses on and i've got the cap you know it looks like i'm trying to capture et and uh i have not gotten covid yeah so out of everybody i know outside of fire ems I'm probably the person that's been around the most COVID and taking those little precautions has kept me from getting it. So yeah. uh, 
I, I, I don't know. Like Evan, I don't, I don't know what you're, what actually works and what doesn't work, what the yeah. illusion of protection is. Yeah. None of us, I guess none of us really do. Well, my wife's a nurse too. And she's same thing, taking care of COVID positive uh, moms, you know, cause she works labor and delivery and yeah. takes all the precautions, but okay. Yeah. It seems yeah. like, it, it seems like we found something that's working. Mm-hmm. I think well, you just gotta, if the, families and the players you know they they recognize the pros cons the risks non-risks whatever and they make that decision then you should you know you should allow them to make that decision i think but yeah and we had mason manic on uh, on the last show and we talked about how important it was like this is his last year of juniors so he's going to age out after this and he had teams that were interested in him for his future right ahl nhl whatever and if he doesn't, if for some reason major juniors doesn't happen, he doesn't know what his future has. Mm-hmm. All this buildup, the 20 plus years of excitement and dumping tons of money into training and private coaches and, you know, living away from home since you're 14 years old. And now it all comes down to this year, whether he plays pro or not. And if you just sit home, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, maybe you made enough of an impression, but that last year of hockey is super important. So if you have to play no check and you go out there and play just skill hockey, I think that's fine. And I guess unless you're a fighter and that's how you're trying to make the the next level. Not even, not even fighting, just you have checking centers, right? right. <laughs> so it's it completely takes away some players' potential skill set that will get them noticed or the – say they're they've got okay hands or whatever they're pretty good shooter but what makes a difference on their team is their tenacity to get in separate guys from the puck and you know generally clear space for their teammates their top two attributes aren't going to be able to be you know showcased and so that 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 changes a lot it's 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 a i mean it's there's no right or wrong answer no right or wrong way it's just it's a shame that that's the case where you know hopefully the players can adapt and figure out a new way. I mean, kids are pretty resilient from being around hockey my whole life. You know, I've had, I had to do that in my career where one summer I had to focus on something else because I knew that going into the next year, that would be what would put me in the best position to get a new contract. So, you know, they're going to have to kind of learn that anyways. It's just forced and thrust upon them earlier at a time when, hopefully they have someone there that can help them do that because it's it's not that easy. Yeah. And you'd think a lot of these teams, a lot of these kids have coaches that have connections. And if, if you are that checking center or you are that guy that needs that contact, I mean, we know some of the, some of the funnest players to watch are those guys, right. That go out, they, they score five goals a year, but they create all kinds of havoc while they're on the ice. And, um, you know, hopefully they have a connection that says they, they'll call that NHL coach for them and say, Hey, you didn't get to see him play his style this year, but yeah, yeah. this is what he can do. I can vouch for that. You know, hopefully that happens. All right. So that kind of leads us into what's going on locally. And uh, Evan, you you coach locally, Gary, you, you play locally and you have kids that are playing in tournaments right now. You have a tournament that's going on right now. Yeah. And are you noticing consistency between the rinks or are you just noticing everybody's kind of just making up their own stuff they are yeah it it's, seems everybody's making up their own stuff you know it's uh you go to park city and the kids have to wear masks on the ice and no other rinks doing that that i'm aware of um cottonwood you got to wear a mask all throughout the place in the locker room now but not when you're playing on the ice and uh a cottonwood you can have one parent watch uh come watch the, your kid play and uh, maverick center you can you can have both parents go and uh, but um only for games not not practices and then the oval they're same you know just wear a mask and social distance and you're good but it it seems like everybody's just kind of making up their own <laughs> what makes them feel good like today maverick center my son had a game and they made the players get dressed outside because they said they had a whole bunch of games today and it was a precautionary just to 
not have too many kids in the locker room, too many teams, I guess. So did they have, were they having all the teams dress outside or just were they were letting some teams dress in the locker room and then they tried to sterilize it while they had other teams dress well, outside? I, that I'm not sure, but I, I, it probably is all, all the teams because okay. – or maybe every other. Because uh, last time we played there, it was not a problem. Evan, what kind of directions do you guys have as far as running practices and stuff? Um, so we – we practice at the Oval in Provo. Um, the Oval wants us to obviously wear a mask going in the rink, get the temperature check, and then wear a mask to the ice. And once we're on the ice, we can take it off. Um, coaches, same thing. Um, and then Provo's kind of the same type of deal. Um, just wear a mask in, temperature check, you know, the, the kind of this, what's become the standard for all that, that stuff. And don't have to wear one on the ice. Um, so I don't know about all the other rinks. Um, some of the events we've went to, they've 30 minutes before the game, you can get in the locker room. Some, some are 15 minutes before, um, and they've been splitting. I, I, was, I don't know if this is new because of this, but they do it in half. So you play the first period, half the second, and then you can, they do the ice, you go in the locker room, and then you have to bring your bag out to the bench take your skates off on the bench and exit the building immediately. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so they've <laughs> kind of been that. doing that. Yeah. Wow. So it's, and it's uh, the other thing I don't quite get is the the 15 minutes or 30 minutes before um, I talked to some people where they're the first game of the day at 7 a.m. and they won't let them go in the locker room 45 minutes or an hour early to, you know, give their kid a little bit of a more normal game preparation right because it's it's tough for them they're they're figuring out how to do you know their pregame preparations when the standard and then you throw away today's 15 today's 30 so you're doing team warm-ups at the hotel and then at the rink sometimes and you know it's so it's I don't understand where how that time frame got kicked in when if you're the first game it shouldn't matter right if there's right. someone there to open the rink let them go in early but once again if if we have to adhere by those rules to play I'm all for it you know yeah. but so the it, goalie it doesn't just, like 15 just, minutes, right? Oh. No, the, the goalies get five minutes more. They get 20. They were going in 20 minutes. So they got five extra minutes. Oh, okay. So it's good, nice. good for them. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, man. I mean, once again, you just got to learn to adapt and yeah. make the best of the situation. And hopefully they can figure out that, you know, once things get back to how they were, if they were or whatever, then they'll know, you know, they can deal with, Oh, if something doesn't go quite right, hopefully they can, because of this, they've been able to figure that out and it'll just make hockey better. The kids better their, you know, preparation and all that. So it's just finding what you can do and dealing with it. Just if, if that's what they want us to do to play, then mm-hmm. we're going to do that to play. You know, do you guys, do you, does your team, do you guys um, before every game and every practice have to fill out like a COVID form that your kid is, the kids are healthy at so before we go to the tournaments, there's the tournaments, events, whatever you want to call them. There's a thing you have to fill out. You can submit it electronically. But um, when you walk in, it's just you have to wear a mask and temperature check. Yeah, because we do that every for for both my kids. They play for the Grizz, the Grizz Junior Grizz, and uh, and we they do that every game. They got to go on, you know. Oh, every game. Okay. Yeah. yeah, every game and and practice. Well, see, I think yeah, those I, forms are ridiculous too because yeah, when I, I'm going into the rink, and like I, I went up to Park City yesterday to skate, and uh, which was my first time on the ice for like almost three weeks, I think. And I went up to their drop in, which I'm so gr- I, I'm just glad that I can go to a drop in, right? Because I'm, I'm yeah. not on a team, I'm not coaching anything right now, and I somehow ended up with no place to play except for drop ins, and well, because there's just no there's no men's league, which I'll get to in a second, also. But uh, I, I get up there, and they, it's the same thing when I go to the dentist or whatever. They're like, okay, fill out this piece, this piece of paper. Have, have you had exposure to somebody that's had COVID? Well, I'm a paramedic. Oh, so that's right. I, oh. Yeah. I was, I was with five people in the last 48 yeah. hours that had COVID. But <laughs> so it's like, I, do I fill that out honestly and then just not ever get to play again? Or do I say no? Like, I know I took the precautions. I know that in the, since March, I get tested all the time, and I get my temperature checked. All you know, at the fire department, we have to check our temperatures twice a day on both days that we're there. Can and, you just uh, take a picture of you in the stuff 
and take it with you and go, yes, I have. And this is what I was wearing. Yeah. And I was, yeah, I kept myself in a somewhat sterile environment. Yeah. So it's, but anyway, I, I know that they're trying to protect people, but if I'm not necessarily answering that a hundred percent honest, which now I probably just blew my cover and won't be allowed back. in any weeks, but <laughs> If I'm not answering it honest, then what about the people that, you know, come from somebody else's house? Like, I know that in some of the schools, I, I know one of the COVID compliance nurses and she well, all right, all right, this kid just tested positive. So this kid's out for 10 days. Now I got to contact the, the kids that were sitting around him or her and they'll pull up the video from the class because all the classes are videoed. And she'll be like, all right, I got this kid's name, this kid's name. And then she'll call the parent and say, hey, your kid was in this class and now you're under COVID quarantine. And they'll be like, uh, nope, our kid wasn't in that class. They missed that day. And they're like, no, 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 we got it on video. We weren't just going off of, we weren't just guessing, but they're like, no, because my kid's on the soccer team or my kid's the cheerleader. And they'll just ignore the direct order to quarantine and their kid will show up to soccer practice or, you know, whatever. And I was just like, wow. I mean, That's some true. people take it serious and some people don't. I take it serious, but I also, I feel like I don't have it. I haven't had it and I still want to play hockey. So yeah. I, it's just one of those things. And then to touch more on, this is the frustrating part. And I'm not trying to call anybody out, but I made a lot of phone calls trying to set this podcast up. Mm-hmm. And the minute I call somebody and they're like, oh, uh, we can't say anything official. So I'm, so I'm calling people from Salt Lake County Hockey. And mm-hmm. I'm calling people from Salt Lake County Parks and Rec. And I'm like, I need to know, like, I just want an honest answer of what's going on. I know that the, I know that the goal was November 1st and now we've completely shut down hockey. We had stick and puck and we had figure skating and now all that's shut down and all you're allowing is like figure skating. And what, what kind of an answer? Oh, we can't give an answer. Well, why not? It's not like you're the FBI and you're working on some, (laughs) You know, it's not like they have a covert mission. I just want an answer of what your plan is or, you know, do we have an ETA of when we can play again? I don't think they really know. They're just, I I honestly, they're probably just protecting themselves because every, everything changes so quickly and, you know, rapidly. Right. So Mm -hmm. like that huge Amber alert thing that popped out a week or two ago and then they changed stuff there and like, they just don't know, <clears throat> you know, they're probably just trying to protect themselves because the minute they come out with something, then it'll change and someone will, you know, raise a, a problem with it because of this, that, and whatever. And uh, it's just, everyone's trying to learn on the fly. And once it gets figured out, then wait, no, now you got to do this. So you, you got to relearn it on the fly. Uh, it's, yeah, that, just, <laughs> it's tough. That alert was last Friday, right? And, yeah, uh, yeah. and so I went to, Right, right after I got it, I, I went to Costco and I kid you not, at least 90% of the carts had paper towels and toilet paper yeah. and they already had a sign up saying limit one. Yeah. I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We were trying to buy paper towels for my wife's work. She works, you know, she, she runs a preschool uh, for autistic kids and they needed, they you know, they need more wipes and they need more paper towels. And no, oh, it was gone right oh, away. I got, I got 15 packs at home. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but and I get the fact that people don't want to be pigeonholed into something, but we're also in an environment where we all understand things can change. And we're watching the numbers, which I have my own opinion on that too, as far as it's funny that we shut everything down when people were, we were getting 300 positives a day and we were scared to death. But now that we're up to 2000 a day, we're like, nah, we're, yeah, we're all right. Like, Point. Yeah. It's, you know, cause we're learning, but that still could be just the answer from the County. They could say, you know what? We had to shut down because the numbers got higher and we're, we're doing the best we can. And our goal, or we're working on a plan or whatever, instead of just saying no comment. Yeah. I just think that's, I don't know. I just think it's kind of irresponsible. And Maybe maybe I'm biased because as media, I need I need content, right? I want stuff to talk about, and all I can talk about is that they're saying nothing. But in the meantime, everybody else is doing something. Park City's open, Ogden's open, Provo's open, the Oval's open, Cottonwood's open. 
but the county won't open a rink. <clears throat> Let's maybe get the mayor on. It's not a bad yeah. idea. <laughs> the mayor that would have been awesome when Pete Caroon was mayor and he was a hockey guy. We could have got a hold of but One of the rings mayor, closed. Yeah, I don't think any of the mayors care about hockey. So yeah, I, I mean it's just something, right? It's just something else to talk about. And uh high school hockey here is going. And that's the positive thing. I get to see updates on what's going on and teams are getting in games. And, you know, we'd love to start talking more about high school hockey and the the positives and the teams that are doing well. I think it's the usual suspects as far as that goes. And it's just good to see that we have some normalcy when it comes to hockey. They're not playing in the normal rinks, but they're getting, they're getting their games in. So that's good. The junior Grizzlies are playing. West Coast is playing. So, and Evan, I don't, did, did you ever get to know Ricard when he was coaching with West Coast? Uh, no, but he was coaching Great Falls my first year of junior, so I played against him there. So, and just, just to start talking about the NHL and to tie in Utah, Ricard Gromberg, who coached for West Coast for, I think, like five or six years. He was here for a while when West Coast no was just becoming an organization. He's now one of the front runners to become the coach of the Seattle Kraken in the NHL, which would be so cool. outside the box. Yeah, Maybe outside. But he's a good European see. coach, and uh, that'd be a huge tie-in for for us with the you know, yeah, with the NHL would be awesome. Um, NHL has pushed their start date. They were looking for December fourth. Now they are talking January one which that canceled all the outdoor games, which oh, yeah. um, is too bad. I've, yeah. I wanted to go to the outdoor game, but I talked to, I talked to some people that went to the LA Colorado one and they're like, yeah, it's a good environment, but man, we could not see the game at all. Like oh. a, in a football <laughs> stadium or a baseball stadium, you're not, you're not able to see the game. You end up just watching it on the board anyway. So they yeah. paid like a thousand bucks to get in and watch it on the Jumbotron. <laughs> but you could say you were there. Yeah, I yeah. still think it'd be kind of cool to go to. Yeah, you bet. Um, but, we, you know, we have a lot of guys that their careers are getting launched and, and waiting with, with uh, Brickley trying to come back from that the illness that he had and basically having to take the whole season off last year. You got a few games in the beginning of the season and a few games of the, in the end. He's waiting. Nick Halloran is waiting to start start his career. And then the watch, we're still watching for Trevor Lewis to get a contract. And I checked before we went on the air, and he hasn't signed anything. Um, Evan, you and I talked a little bit about, about this, and, and I, I compared him to Dustin Penner as far as the – he's a quality guy in the locker room. Like, everybody loves him. Like, they, they talked about him being the unsung hero for, what, nine of the ten years he was in L.A. And – <clears throat> Two Stanley Cups, great on the penalty kill, great at drawing penalties. What what do you think's in store for him this upcoming season? I don't see how he wouldn't get a contract. He's he's too indispensable of a type of player. He said the experience got two cups. He's made long playoff runs. He fits into whatever the team needs, right? Like you throw him on the power play. He doesn't look out of place there. Throw him on a defensive line. He doesn't look out of place there. You know, he he can kill penalties. Like you said, he, he does what he needs to be valuable to the organization and to have a player that still has gas in the tank and everything like that. You, You can't, you can't measure that in terms of statistics or whatever, but it's, that's a type of player that holds locker rooms together, brings locker rooms together, shows young players the, the right way, to do things and they'll listen to him because obviously he's done it the right way. He's won cups Um, where that might be. I have no idea, Um, but I just don't see how a player like him and all that he brings beyond all the on ice attributes. And obviously he's how long has he been in the NHL now? 12 years, something something like that. Yeah. Yeah, So obviously he's got that, but just the, the intangibles that you can pull in from that, you know, I, I, who knows what his future holds, obviously, but I just don't see how once they kind of figure out more what the season will be and when and where, um, you know, then they can kind of find that part of the roster. You know, they, you build rosters and, you know, sections, right. You look for this attribute, you want goal scoring, face-offs, passing, whatever. And 
he's the type of player that can fit into any one of those. So it's just, you know, a matter of time. It's the, it's the, the long wait for a contract. It's, it's, it's a tough one, but you know, it's, I just, like I said, don't see how he won't get something. Yeah. Can't even imagine the anxiety of not knowing all this time and then having all the COVID stuff and the season keeps getting pushed back. And it's awful. Uh, so tough. You just, I mean, I just took a promotional test at the fire department and I was waiting and waiting and waiting to hear the results, where I ended up and am I going to be in a different position in a week or a month? You know, it's like, and that's, it's not, I mean, it's just a different position. It's not my whole, the way I'm paying to put food on the table for my wife and kids or where I'm going to live, you know, and I, I've heard a couple rumors of where he might end up and I'm not just talking, they're, they're usually valuable, like reliable sources. So the first thing I heard, and I talked about this before, is I heard Vegas. I heard Vegas has room for like one guy at maybe four or five hundred thousand, and uh, so that'd bring him down. I think he was at one point two or one point three last year, so that'd bring him down a little bit in pay. But you know, you'd rather get take out a few more years, even as a minimum wage NHL player, rather than being a high paid office executive. The pay is still substantially different, right? Cause you, I, you never know overseas yeah. either you right get, right who knows get that russian money <laughs> yeah because there are some teams over there and there's some fun places to play in the khl you know like yeah yoker uh, it'd be awesome i had a friend that played there finland's a nice place you don't have to deal with the quite the russian i guess experience whatever <laughs> so that's good that can be good that can be bad it can be in the middle you you hear all the you know it spans the whole spectrum on what people's experience is there but you know i just obviously you don't want to I want to see him still in the NHL, but yeah. who knows? I think everybody in Salt Lake wants to see him in the NHL. And I think most people in Salt Lake want to see him on Vegas or Colorado. Uh, the other team I heard was high on the list though, was Carolina. Mm. And uh, that, that was kind of out of the blue for me. I didn't, I guess I sometimes forget they're in the NHL, but you know, it's, it's <laughs> like that, that was, that was a real opportunity or a real a team that was interested in the qualities he would bring into the locker room. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, okay. So that's pretty much all we have to talk about this week. I'm going to get, I'm going to dive deeper into what's going on in high school and we're going to get some more high school hockey on here. I'm going to dive deeper into what's going on as far as local um, rec leagues. If we're going to get adult hockey going on at all, uh, Evan, you guys have a tournament coming up, or are you guys hosting anything? Uh, looking to get some games here. Um, I don't do the scheduling. I don't want to do it. I want <laughs> nothing to do with it. So um, I know I'm looking to get some games and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, the COVID thing, we were supposed to be in Chicago this weekend. And that obviously is not the case. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's touchy. It's finding – because some teams, they can't play games in their home state. So they, you know, they'll travel just over the border to get games or so they can do full contact practices, even instead of, you know, they'll have skill sessions, you know, instead of, you know, there's seven to 10 players on the ice. So it's, you just kind of got to get creative and be flexible to try and make this work as best as possible. And you, you never know it, it, it changes week to week. I mean, some feels like sometimes day to day, hour to hour, you hear one thing and then, Oh wait, no, no, no. Take that back. I, we, we just heard from this. And so it's you just got to get flexible, cross your fingers and hopefully it can stay through. Yeah. yeah. Like talking about men's league, um, the oval has a, a men's league going and they have like a learn to play and stuff going on out there. and Everything's been good. Yeah. So the oval just changed their rules uh, last week. I believe they <laughs> implemented the, uh, the mask. So you have to wear a mask the entire time you're in the building. Mm-hmm. So in the locker room, on the ice, while you're playing and all that stuff, which I, th- I thought it was funny. Uh, last week we talked about, there was a meme um, that, that talked about, uh, it, it was from Letterkenny. It just showed like, you know, you have to wear a mask and it showed that there was six feet of separation in the locker room. So you had to be that far apart from each other in the locker room. And then it's like, but not on the bench and then the penalty box and on the ice, they were fine, you know, whatever. So, there was some of that, and then all of a sudden, bam, the rules are in place that, yeah, the whole time you're in the building, you're wearing a mask, which 
I don't know, Evan, you used to wear a mask for your cardio workouts and stuff. So maybe this is, if you're doing it for fitness, maybe this helps you a little bit. Yeah. The, the training mask I wore is a little different than the clock ones, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Cause I remember early on, they were saying how I was super unhealthy to try and be, you know, exercise or whatever. Cause you're breathing in whatever you're exhaling. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, the kids will probably be in better shape when they can take them off just because they'll be able to breathe better. I, I, I just don't know. You know, I think people just, they're, they want a safe environment. They don't know how to necessarily facilitate that. So everyone does. So they're just kind of throwing up whatever they yep. can think of to be like, all right, we're taking this, this, and this precaution. And you know, that that's, that's it. And they, I guess, again, if that, that's what needs to be done to keep it open and keep people playing than just suck it up and deal with it <laughs> because would, right. would you rather exactly not right. and not play? I mean, sure. You can say like, Oh, it's, I shouldn't have to do this. Well, yeah, you do. If, if then if you don't want to do it, then you're not going to play. So it's, and, you know, and the kids, man, do? it's like the kids going back to school, man. It's like, you want to wear a mask and go to school or do you want to stay home? It's like, I want to wear a mask and go to school. Yeah. And it's my friends yeah. and they don't care. Yeah. It's a, Sure, it's an inconvenience to skate with a mask on, but I know if when when I was eight, nine, ten, twelve, whatever, fifteen, sixteen, like I wanted to skate more than I wanted to do anything else, and whatever I had to do to make that happen, I was gonna do that. So, yeah, I'm in the same boat at this point, and I, you know, and if it works, then great, great, and if it, if yeah. it kind of works, then also yeah. great. Like yeah. if it reduces my chance even ten percent. Right, we'll take it. Yeah, people argue, whatever about. You, I, I'm not. I'm not here to debate. Like I, I didn't want to have a whole COVID episode either. But if it if it changes my percentage five percent that I'm not going to get it, but it gives me a hundred percent chance of playing hockey, I'm in. I'll wear the mask. I'll, no, you know, deal. I've not been ideal, but Bauer makes masks now. You know, like I'm fine with it. It's yeah. it's frustrating. So I just heard about them, like uh, the like the bubble mask has like a, or the the bubble shield has like a mask on it here that I guess covers them. I don't know if kids are going to be able to wear those. I was going to look into it if it's like, who knows, COVID yeah. legal. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know everybody's, things. yeah, I know everybody's looking into trying to make something better, right? That works. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really affect goaltenders very often, but it's, <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, I guess that's it, man. With COVID, it limits how much hockey we can talk about. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna start Takes digging around. Me. Yeah, yeah. It sucks because I, every time you turn on the news, this is all you hear about, and I don't want to be that guy that just keeps harping on COVID. What yeah. I do want to do is keep our listeners informed of what's going on in the hockey world, and uh, what's going on is that we're trying. People are trying. The OHL's trying. The NHL's trying. Salt Lake County's trying, and we're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to get back on the ice because. Uh, Otherwise, I'm gonna go insane. <laughs> I need my therapy back. Yeah. It's Evans. It's Evans' uh, livelihood. It's my. Uh, it's my therapy. Plus, yeah. Gary and I had a trip. We were going to Vegas, man. We were just, we were supposed to be playing in Vegas. Yeah. We need our we need our Vegas time. Yeah, exactly. Go so anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, and don't, that, let, don't let hockey get in the way. Yeah, I definitely was thinking about just going anyway. But everything else is closed, so I basically just go there and sit in the hotel. So, yeah. <laughs> but you know, at this point, I might even take that. <laughs> so anyway, Gary, it's nice to see the office again since I'm not essential and haven't been in the building for you know <laughs> since March, essential. I think. You're yeah. essential, always. That's funny because the the KSL emails I get says you're still not essential. Don't come here. <laughs> but they still pay me. Hey man, my trip, my son, when, when school got uh, let out last year in March, he tried to pull that, you know, so, uh, we don't have to school all non-essential things you don't have to do. So school, <laughs> uh, you're reading it wrong, bro, but good try. Yeah, no doubt. School seems essential. All right, Evan, thanks a lot for being on the show again. Yeah. It's always fun. Yeah. Like good I said, to see let's not let the, the end. In- like go be so far in between now You're more regular <laughs> okay no shunned guys no no we're i i'm more than happy to have you on all the time we'd love to have you on i mean yeah. 
you have a, a wealth of hockey knowledge and experience we can draw on and we love to hear what's going on with West Coast and how you guys are doing. So we'll we'll make sure we have you on. Perfect. Um, All right. Gary, thanks for being yeah. here as always. Thanks. Yeah. It's, nice it's work. easier to get you on every episode when we can just do them whenever we want from wherever we want now. It is, yeah. <laughs> so it's perfect. All right. Well, and that is the Utah Puck Report. 